Okay, students, uh, at the end of the course, we're still having trouble with the idea of what a negative exponent means. Now, in the first place, everybody's been exposed to the laws of exponents. So my only conclusion or the conclusion that I think might be valid is uh, you just really don't have to know the laws of exponents to do well on an SOL. So um, here, let's get the camera up a little higher. So I, I start the question, what is x to the negative n multiplied by x to the n? Now, I note that nobody could tell me. So I had to ask, well, what's x squared times x cubed? You said x to the fifth. So, so how do you, what do you do uh, when you have uh, powers of a common base uh, when, and they're multiplied, uh, the base, you know, the, the expressions are multiplied, you're going to add the powers. And people know that, usually. Uh, sometimes they want to multiply the powers because, uh, as I believe I said in class, um, how do you teach the typical class of algebra students to do enough algebra to pass a standardized test? You teach them to do algebra by reflex rather than by rules. And as I said, I don't have any objection to doing algebra by reflex as long as you know the rules and think about them, at least in the back of your mind, and know that you can justify anything that you do by the rules. There aren't many rules. There are fewer than a dozen of them. Okay, well, uh, x to the negative n multiplied by x to the n, then has to be x to the negative n plus n, which is x to the zero. Now, it was handed down to you on a stone tablet that any number to the zero power is one. That's important to know, but it's also important to know why that's the case. Now, I talked a little bit about why that's the case. I didn't write it out. I simply said, well, what if you multiplied x squared by x to the zero? By the laws of exponents, you would get x to the two plus zero. So your result would have to be x squared. So multiplying x squared by x to the 0 gives you x squared. What number do you multiply by x squared in order to get x squared? Well, I had to digress there. What number would you multiply by 12 to get 12? Be 1. What number do you multiply by x squared to get x squared? It's 1. It follows that x to 0 has to be 1. Since x squared times x to the 0 equals x squared, and x squared times 1 equals x squared, x to the 0 must be 1. Just another instance of a law of exponents that's laid down as if on stone tablets when you could think a little more deeply and understand the consistency of those laws and make your algebra much more reliable and powerful. In any case, so uh, I just say this is true for very good and accessible reasons. I just explained the accessible reasons. Accessible students who have uh, probably somewhat above average uh, mathematical inherent ability, uh, accessible uh, to people of uh, you know very modest ability uh, with a lot of work that might not be worth the trouble. But uh, to governor school students, uh, you should simply you should simply have been taught this. You should simply have been required to know this. Okay. Well, anyhow, since x to the n multiplied by x to the negative n is 1, as we see here. Then x to the negative n, well, how do you solve this equation for x to the negative n? Again, nobody knew. Nobody could answer this question. We had to go up here and say, well, if 3x to the negative n equals 1, what does x to the negative n equal? Uh, and people still had trouble because Again, your reflexes don't kick in when you see that x. As soon as I see that x to the negative n there, your reflexes are gone. Okay? But the rules that you use to solve equations are still there if you're doing, if you're solving your equation by rules rather than by reflex. The rule, two the most basic rules are you can multiply or divide. Uh, both sides of the equation by the same thing as long as that thing isn't zero and you don't change the solutions. Or you can add or subtract the same quantity to both sides and you don't change the solutions. Those are the rules you use to solve the most basic equations. There are other rules, you know, when you take roots and powers and worry about extraneous roots and stuff like that. <coughs> we don't need to worry about that right now. And uh, not everybody's gotten to algebra two 
uh, and that's really kind of where you start worrying about those subtleties. So uh, if you've gotten through Algebra 2 and don't know what I'm talking about with extraneous roots and stuff, then uh, maybe there are some things that should have been discussed, but they aren't on the SOL, so they don't get discussed. Anyhow, 3x to the negative n equals 1. How do you solve that? Nobody could tell me. Well, you multiply both sides by one third. Or if you like, you can divide both sides by three. I, I usually tend to prefer multiplying because it's it's a little more general. Um, you know, multiplying by the reciprocal of the number you want to uh, get rid of on one side. And so we multiply both sides by one third. And then technically you need to regroup the one third and the three using the associative law. And then you know that one third is the multiplicative inverse of 3, so that this is 1. And by the identity property, 1 times x to the negative n is x to the negative n. So that x to the negative n would be 1 third. Now, that's not important for the argument we're doing here, except that people needed to see that in order to be able to solve this equation. And this was still a little bit confusing for people. But what we do is we divide both sides by x to the n, or multiply both sides by the reciprocal of x to the n. And in that context, it should be very clear to you that x to the negative n would then be 1 divided by x to the n. And there is one of your laws of exponents. Nobody seemed to be aware of. Uh, now, the big point here is, that in the first place, that's really important. That's really, really important. You you're extremely limited in what you can do if you don't know this. So you should know this by reflex, but you should also understand the consistency of this with the other laws of exponents. Specifically, uh, what do you get if you do x to one power multiplied by x to another power? You add powers. That and a couple of other things lead you directly to this conclusion. Now, my big point here is uh, that if you combine the rules with reflex. I mean, I have nothing against learning to do algebra by reflex, as long as you're never far from the rules, and as long as you can always state the basic rule that you use when you're doing something reflexively. If you don't know the rules, you can't check to see whether your reflexes are right. You, you, there are all kinds of reflexes you can do wrong. Uh, you can multiply x squared times x cubed and multiply the 2 by the 3 and get x to the 6. That's wrong, but it's very easy to do. And if you don't know uh, the laws, you aren't likely to catch yourself on that one. Um, reflex isn't reliable. Rules combined with reflexes gives you reliable, secure algebra. And the ability to apply to unfamiliar situations. What did we see here? We saw an unfamiliar situation with x to the negative n times x to the n, uh, an unfamiliar type of equation uh, that's very easy to solve, just using the same principles you would use to solve 2a equals 1. OK? So uh, the big lesson here is <coughs> understanding what reflex is, understanding what rules are. There aren't many rules. There are a lot of things to have reflexes to. Um, and it's easier to learn to use a dozen rules than it is 10,000 cases. OK? Uh, once you know the rules, you know how to play the game, and it becomes much easier.